Ibn Taymiyyah was born during the Mongol invasion. The Mongol invasion when none other than Genghis Khan or Chinggis Khan invaded the Muslim lands when the Muslims politically were at their pinnacle of success. And Genghis Khan and his children and his grandchildren and his great grandchildren for over a hundred years all of them brought the whole of the Muslim Ummah to ruins. Ibn Taymiyyah said, Oh my student, whoever fears a creation has a disease in his heart and he does not have true knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if he had the true knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was the medication for, the, for this disease in his heart. And do you want to hear a story? Do you want to hear a story that actually proves that Ibn Taymiyyah didn't have this disease of fear to the slightest in his heart? The Mongols, the Mongols who shook the Muslim Ummah to the core, they, after shaking the Ummah to the core, the miracle of miracle happened and they converted to Islam. The great great grandson of Genghis Khan, whose name was Ghazan, Ghazan, he happened to accept Islam and the whole dynamics of the Ummah changed. And now, even though he did accept Islam, but his actions were still unacceptable. So Ghazan is nominally a Muslim. He is praying, he is fasting and he is having scholars with him while he go to war. But his actions as a king are still Mongolian, following his great-grandfather. And, and I do mean it. His actions are completely Mongolian, particularly when it comes to war crimes and his barbaric activities. So Ghazan has camped outside Damascus. And he's threatening to raid Damascus and to make the city fall on the ground. And Damascus is the city of Ibn Taymiyyah. And people start to flee Damascus. They believe everything now is lost. And Ibn Taymiyyah stands up in the masjid of Damascus and he gives a powerful khutbah. And he asks for a bunch of scholars to volunteer to meet Ghazan. And he, with other scholars, goes to the camp of Ghazan and say, We are the ulama of Damascus and we demand to see your king. And they eventually were granted permission. Now the scholars led by Ibn Taymiyyah entered the golden tent of Ghazan. There was a special tent for him. Now you can imagine king and the sword versus the scholars and their words. And we all know how barbaric the Mongols were. In history, hardly any dynasty comes close to the barbaric activities of the Mongol dynasty. And as the scholars enter the tent, they are supposed to stand at a certain position, right? Though the king is still sitting on his throne, even inside the golden tent. And the scholars have to stand at a certain position. Now imagine this scene. The scholars enter the tent and stood at the position they are supposed to be standing at. But Ibn Taymiyyah never stopped. He entered the tent and he kept walking straight towards the king. And he covered the distance so much that he came so close to Ghazan that his knees were almost touching with the knees of Ghazan. Can you imagine the scene here? The knees of Ibn Taymiyyah while he was standing was almost touching the knees of Ghazan who was sitting on the throne. Ibn Taymiyyah rose his head high and raised his voice loudly and kept yelling literally as much as two feet distance away from the face of Ghazan. Can you still imagine the scene here? He said that you claim to be Muslim and you claim to believe in Allah and his messenger and you claim that you pray and you fast and yet you kill and rape and plunder and steal and mutilate the corpses and you did this and you did that. Have you no fear of Allah? Have you no fear of Allah? And he said, your own grandfather who was a kafir, who was a pagan, was not as bad as you are. And he enumerated a number of actions that, Ga that Ghazan did. And the scholars behind were absolutely terrified. Whoa, this is not Ibn Taymiyyah called us for. One of them says, I lifted my robe up so that the Ghazan all of a sudden chops off the head of Ibn Taymiyyah and the blood of Ibn Taymiyyah will stain my robe. So I lifted my robe up because I didn't want the blood of such a man like Ibn Taymiyyah's blood on my clothes. So that's what the scholars were expecting. And Ghazan, all the while Ibn Taymiyyah is shouting at him, 
the head of Khazan is lowering and lowering and lowering and he did not make any noise. And when Ibn Taymiyyah finished, Ghazan said to his people that these are the scholars of Damascus. Bring a feast for them. Subhanallah, bring a feast for them. And a very luxurious feast was arranged and all of them, all the scholars ate except Ibn Taymiyyah. And when Ghazan said, aren't you going to eat? To his face, Ibn Taymiyyah said, you expect me to eat while I know that these animals have been stolen from Muslim lands? And the weeks of such and such city you plundered were robbed to make you rich? And again, this Ibn Taymiyyah started a mini lecture to him. He gave a mini khutbah to him again. And Ghazan listened to him. And he ate and asked the other scholars to continue. You all continue eating. And the other scholars did eat. They were afraid to say no to someone like Ghazan. Even though Ibn Taymiyyah is scolding Ghazan that uh, I'm not going to eat this. Yet other scholars are eating because they are afraid to say no. Imagine the difference of heart of Ibn Taymiyyah and any other scholar, right? And after it's done, after the feast is done, the scholars with Ibn Taymiyyah goes back to Damascus and Ghazan says, we are going back. We are not attacking Damascus now. His advisors ask, what had happened to you? Why didn't you give the command to just chop off his head? And Ghazan said, the fear of this man instilled my heart. Allahu Akbar. Ghazan said, I never saw anybody as fearless as this man. And I couldn't raise my voice in front of him. Allahu Akbar. Ghazan, he had seen the bravery of a warrior on battlefield. But never in his life had he seen the bravery of a scholar. This was the first incident. And he feared none of the brave warriors. But he genuinely got afraid of a brave scholar. And he got so afraid that he didn't attack the city he lived in. Out of fear and no other feeling, just out of fear, he ran away from Damascus never to return back again. This was Ibn Taymiyyah. His Jannah was in his heart. What could his enemies do to him? If they killed him, they had granted him Shahada. If they imprisoned him, they had provided him seclusion to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they exiled him, they had provided him an opportunity to visit the vast land of Allah and contemplate on the creations he had created. What could they do to him?